Community Kitchen is proudly brought to you by Gemini Catering Equipment at gemcat.com.au. And tonight's episode of Community Kitchen is proudly supported by the Noble Experiment, named after the 20s ban on drinking liquor and fashioned on the idea of an early drinking house. It's a modern experience steeped in history. For more, go to thenobleexperiment.com.au. On tonight's show, we spend some time with 2014 Royal Comedy winner Matt Stewart and his sous chef, Alastair Tremblay Birchall, whipping up a wintry veggie curry. We have a chat with Alastair at the bar and hear a song from Penny Maddox. Hello, welcome to Community Kitchen. Today, we're at the Noble Experiment in Collingwood with Matt Stewart, just one Raw Comedy. We also have <laughs> Alastair Tremblay Birchall hanging over in the corner. You two live together. Yeah, That's we correct. do. Yeah. Is it because because Al, you're not mic'd up at the moment because we only have two mics, and you we get to have a chat with you a bit later. Al's gonna be our sous chef today. Do you know what a sous chef is? No, I don't know what a sous chef is. No, I was really hoping you were gonna know what a sous chef. <laughs> is. Isn't that like an apprentice under chef? Like yeah, that sounds someone like someone like that. Learning? Yeah. Yeah. Al. Is that correct? Al speaks French. He, I assume yeah, that's he a does. Yeah. What What are we making? <laughs> we're making a curry. So you just won raw comedy. I did, yeah. I tried. I got like a runner-up a few years ago. Oh, is that all? Not, that's that's bit, really embarrassing. It's a bit embarrassing. <laughs> but, but how did you find it? How did you find the the giant town hall full of people? It's a big it was gig. really, yeah. I, I've never been as scared in my life, I don't think, before walking out. And like, I think it showed because four different people <laughs> before I walked out all gave me like calming advice. <laughs> um, which worked because like once what? I was out there it was really great but beforehand I was like a few people said to me they said oh, oh you, you're good man just you know you belong here you were chosen to be here just be just do it that's good maybe that's why I didn't win no one calmed me yeah no and that was super calming because like oh that's I guess that makes sense <laughs> even though you know, I still still doesn't really feel like I belong there, but it's, hey, hey, hey! I um, when I was a kid, I was about fourteen when I told my dad I was vegetarian. I came home from yeah. school, and he's like, "No, you're not." He came out, and he goes, "I've made bolognese tonight. You're gonna eat this bolognese." <laughs> and he's a really nice guy normally, but he he was like really um, I think he was a bit afraid of me becoming like he thought it'd be really unhealthy or something. He just didn't know. Probably put a lot so of he, effort into the bolognese. He did do that too, yeah. And he sat me down and he made me eat it and I cried and stuff. And that's the last meal of meat that I ate on purpose. So from now he wouldn't cook me a separate meal, you know. So I, from 14, right, I've made pretty much vegetarian pasta every night since then, apart from yeah. the other night when I made this curry. And then you discovered curry. Hey, Sue, could you please um, fry that up with some oil and maybe some... Give him a hug. It'd be an honor. <laughs> Thanks so much. And get some of this curry paste in. What I want you to do, Al, is fry it till it's translucent and then add some of the curry paste. Someone messaged me some instructions. Sorry. <laughs> They're really good instructions. Yeah, that's as far as I read, though. How, so how long have you been performing? Um, just uh, about it, maybe coming up to a year and a half, some, uh, yeah. between a year and a year and a half, but not like all that frequently. What's the thing that surprised you the most? What's something that you didn't expect? Um, I, was, I honestly am surprised that I made it anywhere through the competition at all. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know. It was just everyone was nice all the way through. That's something you don't know. Like, comedians are all, like, really nice. I never expected. The thing, the thing I always got surprised was people would say, oh, yeah, every audience is different. And at the start, I didn't know what that meant. And yeah. now I know... Like you can have a sticky crowd and a heavy crowd. Yeah, and a cold scared, crowd. scared crowd when you're and MC. A, yeah, yeah, and <laughs> a, 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 just a touchy crowd. Yeah, there's all sorts of different adjectives, and they're all they never you never get two that are kind of like oh well that's the same I know this one. Yeah, that's that's true. Like I think uh, in Raw anyway, it's like probably the nicest crowd you'll ever have. Do you know what? 
I keep forgetting this, and he reminds me, so I don't mind telling it. Just before I went on stage at the Royal Final, Luke McGregor like poured a beer over me. Really? Yeah, accidentally. He's he's really famous now, so it's totally fine to bag him <laughs> out. But he did it by mistake. He just he just poured beer all over me, and I had to get the makeup lady to like, emergency blow dry me. Wow! <laughs> and then run on stage. And and did that hurt your uh, performance at all? Yeah, I think yeah. It really did. I just bump you won. down one spot. I would have won. I Damn won. you, McGregor! I blame him. Everything would have been different. <laughs> hey, Ali, can I get that board back, please, Sue? So what happens now? What happens now? Um, I think, from what I've been told, what I mean, what I know, potato takes a bit longer to um, cook. So you want to get that in next I maybe the after the curry too. and the pumpkin. Because they're sort of like raw things. Mm. And they're then I think raw. mushrooms and like, yeah, those okay. guys are probably going late. They'll be okay. Because you want a bit of crisp? Yeah, a bit of crisp, A bit of crispness to like a bit of, you know, a juxtaposition. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I want a juxtaposition. That's what comedy's all about, is juxtaposition. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. That's the Can secret. Can you teach me more about comedy? Uh, no. No, we can't. We can't talk about it. Um, did you always know you wanted to do it? That's a question so you get asked a lot. Yeah, I guess so. It is something I've always, yeah, kind of wanted. I didn't, like, I'm not sure if I ever thought I'd actually do it, but it's something I've always wanted to do, you know? Mm. It's the kind of, you know, people say, like, I listen to a lot of comedy podcasts and stuff and people talking about comedy, and people are normally like, you just are a comedian or you're not. There's no choice. Yeah. Which, yeah. I kind of feel that way. Yeah, yeah. Which prop might, because I, I guess you sort of still have to make a choice at some point, right? Yeah. Cause I yeah I think that might mean I'm not really a comedian. Cause I I um I don't know I, I feel like I could have not done it maybe. Mhm. Is it and your biggest fear? No no I quite like talking in front of people. My biggest fear is that I forget words. You know. What's your biggest other fear? That's not stand up. Um. I don't know, pa paper cuts on their eyelids. Ah! Oh, Maybe eyeballs even worse. That's really specific. Yeah, I know. That's a, when did that happen to you? I think as a kid, I think what? I started thinking about that. I've, it's never happened, but it's just, I hate paper cuts. Um, and I think yeah, anything you with your, your eyes. Eyeballs. Yeah, that's why I'm not sure. You know, people talk about getting. Put the knife away from um, your eyes. Getting, what are you doing? Well, knives in the eyeballs don't, <laughs> they're, not, they're not the same. But that scares me, I didn't even know. <laughs> what about yeah. wolves? Wolves. Are you afraid of wolves? No, nah, I don't mind dogs. Dogs are cool. No, wolves. Wolves. Uh, wolves are all right. Like, wh why wolves? No, I think the scariest, um, like, supernatural thing. Wolves mm -hmm. are supernatural, right? <laughs> they're not, they're not, you're not telling me they're real, eh? No, th yeah, they're like. real. Wolves are a mammal. Wolf men, right? I don't know if they're <laughs> that scary. Wolf men are not real. Okay. So I've jumped ahead. Yeah. Uh, Alright, real things that are scary. I think the scariest animals, probably like, maybe, my favourite animal is a wombat, right? I love a wombat! Yeah, I think that's my favourite animal. The scariest have animal. Seen, have you seen the video on YouTube of the um, Danish man patting a wombat? No. It's a good video. Can we, can we uh, segue to that now? Do you have that power? Um, no, I have it now. <laughs> we, yeah, we can put it instead of the episode. Al, could you go fetch the um, the wombat video, please? What do you know about wombats? Hey, have you, can you put have those Have you seen in one the in the wild? I've never yeah, seen I've one seen in the wild. Yeah, I've seen a family of them in the wild. Oh, what? Just driving down this dirt road. The onion's not translucent Al, yet. go away, we're talking about wombats. I reckon just, I don't know what the translucent thing is. That might not even happen with this kind of onion. Maybe just go for it. Mm. Believe, feels like long enough. Tell me about the wombat. Well, there was like it was a fa like I never knew how big they were till that till that fateful night. Yeah, we were really driving big. through the dirt road and then like we stopped and then a family of wombats crossed the road and they were like big as dogs. How do they walk? Do they walk in a line? I yeah, they were walking oh, in a line. I wanted them to walk in a line. They do. Well, they did that time. I think they were wombats. They could, maybe they were dogs. <laughs> they were wolves. I'm, I'm not talking. Wolves. It's not a mythical thing. This is a real <laughs> thing that happened. Like, what's the biggest animal you think you could fight? <laughs> Well, for me, it would be like a big dog. I reckon, I reckon a medium dog, Sam. Because mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, I like. So it need to be something I can pin down. I don't know if I'd fight it so much because it feel, it would feel a bit wrong. You talking about like punching a dog? Yeah, like a dog that's trying to fight you. Ah. Uh, this is why, not like. Why is the dog fight? It's not in a ring or anything like that. No, like. 
Like when I say we're speaking of animal, you think you can fight? You don't have to start the fight. <laughs> you right, have to okay. go onto the savannah and be like, "Hey, lion!" Yeah. I reckon our lions are probably too <clears throat> big, like a small lion, like a baby lion, mm. like a newly born lion before their eyes are working properly, because they're still pretty big. <laughs> what about a pygmy hippopotamus? I think. I reckon I could fight one of them. Hippopotamus, they're meant to be like, aren't they one of the deadliest animals in yeah, the but world? Yeah, a pygmy one, like the little ones. I still feel like they'd be pretty heavy. Yeah, but they'd be heavy, but I reckon I could punch them. I think it. I weigh like <laughs> 65 kilos or something. So yeah, it would have right a weight now? advantage. How much do I weigh again? 65 kilos. 65 kilos, so. What else? That's not right, that sounds low. No, it's 65. <laughs> so there you go. What else do you do in your house other than cook and weigh each other? Um, our, our other housemate Andy, Andy Matthews, been on he, the show. Yeah, he has been on the he show. He wrestles Al a bit. Uh -huh. It's really fun to watch. You should um, you should come around and watch it sometime. Because <laughs> they like, you, who would you think would win out of those two? Mm. I feel like like Al might have the weight advantage, but Andy's pretty mean. Wow, that's interesting, Al. Who's the winner? Oh, yeah, could you? Andy. Yeah, that's what I would think. So sorry, man. You don't look like a killer, he's buddy. You no, don't look like a killer. That's funny. When he gets angry, he's like a hes a pretty angry guy. He's similar to you. I, I'm quite afraid of both of you when you're angry. Well, maybe we should start putting this curry together. Yeah. And we'll take a break and we'll leave you on community kitchen. Um, I don't get out very easily, but we can do this together. So we'll take a break. You, you just look right down there. And you can help me. I'm not very good at cutting out sometimes. I'm really good at cutting out. Do you want to try? Yeah, where are we cutting to? Um, just to a break. We're cutting to a break. <laughs> see you soon. He's, it's, it's no, really I'm lied. I'm not very good it's at really it. It's really hard. Um, we'll see you after the break on Community Kitchen. Stuart and Al Tremblay Birchall. Alistair can't talk because he doesn't have a microphone, so if he wants to speak, he has to hug one of us. And where are we up to in this curry thing? We're getting like on the home stretch now. We've got all the pumpkin and the onion and the potato and the curry and the thing. What now happens? we're going to put some coconut milk. Oh, you're gonna I want to do it. That's the funnest part. No, no, I'm saying that's well chosen. You chose the funnest part. Congratulations. You might have to stir it a bit because sometimes it goes I all shook it. conky. I Even shook it better. Eight. Pour that down, and then that starts to like simmer it in. I watched MasterChef once, or one of those shows, it was probably wasn't that. And they said stuff like simmer, simmer down. All right, that's looking good. It's pretty full. That's looking pretty good. I reckon that's perfect. Chuck them in on top, and then I reckon the beans even later. Like this is gonna have to, I think this is gonna have to cook for a while. Can we put one bean in? Yeah, you can put one bean to in. see how it goes. One at a time. All right, and if it goes okay, we'll put the rest in. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? So none of these have to go in that of when Well, no, before? they totally can, right? I just don't know. Do you want it to be chillier? Do you want it to be or chillier? Or garlicer? Well, you're going to eat it. Yeah, that's some good... Is that enough? That's, that's oh. perfect. <laughs> that smells good. Ginger? Ginger? Like me? You do like a you do a cooking show right every week, and I I cook very rarely. I feel like you should be able to <laughs> teach me some stuff. I thought I was here to learn. <laughs> you thought this was yeah. You, they said what Come you want to cook, cook, and you went. Oh, I I'd really like to learn to cook a curry. Is that not? <laughs> well, I could cook this. I could. Uh, I could. I can do it. It's Look at just, that. It's more fun if this kind of looks like it's going to be great. We're going to get this on rice. So let's go out and have a chat with you, and you get your very own microphone. <laughs> Hello, and we're going to welcome Alistair properly now. Hello, Laura. How uh, are you? You've got your own microphone. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing good. Yeah, you don't have to hug people when you want to talk. You know, but that's not the worst thing that's ever happened to me. What's it's, the worst thing that's ever happened to you? Uh, look, I probably one time I woke up after going back to, that, to my uh, as being an adult, going back to my parents' place. Uh, and going out and having a few drinks and then waking up that remember going to bed and then waking up and I uh, made a 
I was being woken up by my dad and my brother, and I was making a horrible mess in the hallway. That's bad, man. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, let's ignore that. It's not life-threatening, though. No, That's no, good. nothing that bad has happened to me. Are you productive no. on your days off? I'm terrible. Yeah, yeah, no, I will go into YouTube black holes. Uh. Um, or, but I, look, I go in with the best of intentions. <laughs> yeah. What's the best of intentions <clears throat> when you log onto YouTube? What's that? Oh, no, no, usually the YouTube thing is like, it's like, I go, okay, I'm going to oh, do some okay. writing today, and then I go, oh. I should look into this one thing. I should just learn a little bit about this before I write about it. And that's the worst thing. You don't need to know anything about anything to write. It turns, <laughs> turns out you can just write about it. And then the more you know, the more it'll distract you from, because then you'll just go in and then you'll, you'll go, oh, well, I know a little bit about this. I can learn a little bit more about this. Yeah, yeah. and then you can just, and then, and then eventually you just watch videos of people falling off ladders. You Isn't know? That the only thing I watch on, I don't watch television, Alistair. Yeah, no, but, I don't but, watch movies. One thing I do watch is infomercials. In, info, in, infomercials. Infomercials. Yeah. And, thanks and, for and helping so, me wait, with do that. You, do you watch them? Do you go online go where on. you could avoid them? <laughs> yeah. And you go and you look. You yeah, seek them I out. Yeah. Because I don't have a television. Yeah. And sometimes if they're on TV, I don't get the ones that I want. It's 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 like one for reflective powder. I don't care about those ones. Yeah. Um, the, my favorite is the Magic Bullet. Yeah. Infomercial, the one. classic one. Two, Two, three. three. <laughs> and there's the guy and the lady, right? And yeah. Th and then there's all those weird people in their house and you have no knowledge of why they're in the house except for the fact that they were there the night before and they just woke up hungover and then they make breakfast for them and then they make drinks for them and they're like, let's start partying again. And I've gone online to uh, onto forums to try and find out why, what is the story behind this, right? Yeah. M Mick and Mimi and Berman and Hazel and... And the only thing that comes up consistently, if you read, my favorite thing is to watch it on YouTube and then read all the comments and read the new comments. I've read all of the comments and to get like the new ones. And it's all consistent that it's this weird sex party. And it's the only way. It's like a weird sex house. I think it's, prob it's probably like an Amway group. So like, you know, like Amway, it's like, you know, they, they, they sell, like, it's like one of those pyramid schemes where you sell each other products and then, well, and then you, you, you recruit people. And then when they sell products, you make money from their sales and things like that. But everybody just lives that off. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Oh, it's really good. <laughs> if, if you get in early, you can really make a lot of money. Uh, but then the problem is, how do you know when's early? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, but I reckon it's one of those, and then they're just like, they're used to just giving demonstrations to people, and so now they just get together, and that's how the only way they socialize is. They're like, oh, tell me about this new blender that you have. <laughs> What's your favorite part of the Magic Bullet commercial? I just, I'm amazed that they can claim that it takes three seconds yeah, to make salsa. Yeah, and they always cut off at the end. Three seconds. That, like, yeah, that you could make... <laughs> That you could make 20 batches of salsa in a minute. Um, I like the bit where <laughs> Hazel comes in and she's got like the fake cigarette and she's still in a bathrobe and why is she? And everyone else is dressed and, <laughs> and she comes in and she doesn't really belong there. But if you watch the sequel, if you watch the, mal the magic bullet to go, right, that's the camping one. That's when they're all camping. They're all camping together, this weird sex party camping thing. Yeah. And then... Berman and Hazel hook up because they mm -hmm. didn't know Hazel. They're like, Hazel, where did you come from? And she crawls out of his tent and she's still got a fake cigarette and they're like, ew. Is it an e-cigarette? Or she's smoking in the tent? No, it's a fake cigarette. Those things are super flammable. <laughs> it's a fake one. <laughs> I don't even know if she knows it's fake. Yeah. And yeah. then later there's, there's the baby bullet one where it's like a baby shower blender <gasps> thing. But that's their children. She's still smoking? No, that's their daughter. Okay. But then the daughter's at the weird sex party at the start. So why are they having these weird sex parties around their daughter? Look, it's just, it's a cultural thing. I think it's, that's what it's like in America. You know, so. One, two. two three. And then once the salsa's made, you got more time for partying. That's I, all I, I prefer the term intercourse party. I just, it's just more polite. You know, it's, it's more business. It's down to business, which yeah. is again, it's a very American corporate thing. If I go into a YouTube black hole, it's just me rewatching that and trying to make more connections. There's another one I like though. It's a for, a, it's for a, like an exercise thing that straps onto your door. Yeah. And and it's a New York dude that oh. reads it. And he goes, "You got a door? You got, you got a, a gym. gym." And then he's like, "And best of all, it's padded, so there's no messing up your door." <laughs> he's so tough. He's like, "No mess up your door." <laughs> I love him. I look the favorite things that I, I've 
I've seen on YouTube is Meanwhile in Russia. It's just Russian videos. And that's, uh, there's, there's something about Russia that the bleakness kind of makes, makes me you feel good. You love bleak. Yeah, and it's just like, it's people that are so bored. And it's like people like, on top of these like mansion like five story roofs it's just kids and they've tied a rock to a, to a, to like a like a, a golem a stone golem and then they've just tied a rope and then they're just swinging off this thing like a hundred feet in the air and they're just going yeah like that or 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 it's people like it's just or it's just footage of like somebody just filming on a street and then like on a city street and then suddenly like a horse and a dog will just run by <laughs> along the footpath just by themselves like that, or or it's it's a lot of dash cam stuff. Like yeah. people kind of like, like just starting fights with somebody that clipped their car and things like that. It's kind of scary. I don't get a lot done anymore. I used to be really gung. When mm. I was fourteen, I was writing a historical novel about the discovery of Australia, and I would sit in the library like all day just wow. typing out my historic. Now, now I actually need to write stuff. Yeah. I don't get it done. I have a bed where I can stare at the sky. Yeah. And now well, nothing you, gets you're done. You're not going to get anything done. Nothing that's, gets done that's now. That's nature's television, <laughs> yeah. is the sky. Yeah. It's nature's magic bullet I, ad. I spend all my time thinking about how I'm going to do work. Yeah. Like, because that's, that's quite, like, I mean, that's labor intensive already. Because you go, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to start doing two hours of writing a day of just one liners, right? And then I'll spend one hour a day just riffing by that myself out great. loud yeah riffing about out loud just so that i can get my brain good yeah. at like coming up with stuff as we yeah. go like that and then i'll probably spend an hour exercising because you got to yeah. do that a little bit and then yeah and so that takes up a lot of my time it's like mental lists <laughs> and how my life is going to be better but deep down i really know that i'm i'm good enough thank you so much for coming and having a chat with us was we're good, gonna go back enough? we're gonna take your microphone yeah i'm sorry we're gonna go back in we're gonna test the curry which to be honest, you did all of the work for. Yeah, but I'm gonna I, let Matt. I cut up a bean. Yeah, I'm gonna let Matt claim it though. Yeah, he needs it more. Yeah, he needs yeah, yeah. it. He more. needs this right now. <laughs> and we'll be back after the break with a song from Penny Maddox. Join us, we're at the Noble Experiment in Collingwood with Alistair Trevely Birchall. Hey everybody. <laughs> and that's Stuart who's cooked us his delicious curry. Are you happy with it? Um, somewhat happy. Remember when I was talking about if it wasn't cut out when I talked about the juxtaposition? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I stuffed that up. We're all lifting up beans, yeah. soft, <laughs> soft, squishy so beans. We're lifting up beans, everyone's beans are doing it. going to be really crisp, so you've got a bit of a, a differentiation between the pumpkin and the crispness of, of, the, of the beans. Well, I hope that in post-edit they uh, edit out the part where I'm yelling, just put the beans in. Yeah, it was you. Yeah. <laughs> but not if they cut that part out of the episode. Oh. Look, I still think that because the, the, the snow pea is a relatively fibrous, uh, fibrous bean, it still kind of keeps its structural integrity. So overcooking is not such a big problem. It doesn't have that crisp, mm. but you know, I think we, you've done really well here. You've chosen a good vegetable to overcook. Thanks so much, Al. You did very well, like, seeing as you really did everything. Yeah. Mm. I just sort of told you some stuff. That potato came up well. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It was so, really fun to chat with so you. Nice. Thank the, you. The, Thank pum you the pumpkin really brought a lot of sweetness to it. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next week with our best of episode. And we're going to take you out of this one with a song from Penny Maddox.
Tonight's episode of Community Kitchen was proudly supported by the Noble Experiment, 284 Smith Street, Collingwood.